Good afternoon, morning, welcome back to Turbo Tortoise Tech. My name is Walkie Double XL and this is your tech news in six minutes or less. AMD's new Super Beast Threadripper lineup leaks. Intel's 11th gen desktop lineup sneaks out alongside that. Some benchmarks of the new AMD APUs come out. RTX 20 series is EOL as Nvidia prepares for the 30 series launch. Ubisoft has been super busy making all the remakes. ROG makes a 240Hz portable monitor. Some mad lad drops nearly 2 million rants on Super Mario. Razer makes a mouse for people with small hands. And I give you the Turbo Daughters Tech top picks for specials from Uncle Eve Tech. Kicking off with AMD and their new Threadripper Super Monsters. They've gone and done it again, haven't they? Now the 64 core 128 thread setup will support two terabytes worth of RAM and enough PCIe lanes that their entire AMD EPIC series that they've been working on in server can now basically be facilitated through a single chip which is obviously mad because it's going to take the need for things like render farms with massive amounts of PCs and stuff and do away with that overnight. You can now have NVIDIA deep learning machines with a single processor instead of having to have a multi-processor board which obviously drops that cost right down. It's, it's just obviously quite mad. Intel's 11th gen desktop is already on the way and with some well very sort of weird setups. Now the R9 9900K uh, was difficult to differentiate from its R7 brethren because of, they were both 8 core parts. Then they bumped it to 8 core 20 thread. Now they're doing away with the 10 core, so it's going back to 8 core 16 thread. And then the R7 is going to be an 8 core 12 thread setup. So you can have hyper threading per core and turn certain pieces on and off. I just hope that this actually means that their new processor's efficiency is so high that it doesn't need multi core to keep up with. Uh, AMD and multi-threaded workloads. Speaking of multi-threaded workloads, the 4700G was put through some overclocking and Cinebench treatment and it scored well really really well. It's almost 54% better than it was previous gen 1700X. So from the start of 8 core 16 thread to now an APU at 65 watts is doing a 54% better job in multi-threaded benchmarking. Impressive 4.5 gigahertz all core overclock on this chip as well. APU has an internal graphics card, so you don't have to go and buy a whole GPU to be able to use this chip. This is an all in one chip that will be for the desktop and hopefully launching in September. So, if you're a designer and video editor, anything like that, this should really be on your radar. NVIDIA has called the RTX 20 series EOL as they prepare for their 30 series launch later in the year. It does look like 17th of September is going to be the hot date for when these GPUs are released. So if you guys are looking to buy a GPU currently, there should actually be some specials on the RTX 20 series and the one that I would highly suggest is the 2070 Super. I've got one, I've put one in some of my mates builds and at 1080p it's significantly overkill already for where we are at the moment and if you can get it on a discount it does mean you're getting some performance kind of for free so look out for those deals coming up in the near future. Speaking of fast frame rates ROG has made a 17 inch portable 240 hertz monitor and I just had to mention it just because look at it it's it's super super cool yes 17 is a little bit small but if you're on the go and you have a gaming laptop and you want 240 hertz plus your gaming laptop screen you can effectively have dual monitor with high refresh rate red Ubisoft has been working hard in the background on some new games being a new Far Cry, Far Cry 6 which is going to be set in South America. Then we have Assassin's Creed Valhalla which we spoke about last week which actually does look really really cool I must say. And then a new Watch Dogs will be coming out as well. So if you are into Ubisoft sandboxes there's never been a better time to get your hands on well possibly three new games coming out in the near future. Razer has made a really cool looking little death adder. It's really, really small death adder mini V2 and it's for small people with small hands with a small price. 
In some other gaming news, an absolute mad lad has dropped the equivalent of 1.9 million South African rons on a brand new, spanking, completely fresh, sealed copy of Super Mario Bros. 114,000 US dollars was what was paid for it on auction. So if your parents try to tell you that your collector's edition is not going to be worth anything, just show them this article and tell them, go on and shut up. Lastly, the Turbo Tortoise Tech top picks from Uncle E-Tech store this week. If you aren't cold enough in this cold front, these fan kits from Rajin Tech and Gundios will cool you off. Hick Vision's SSDs are still at a steal. Lenovo gets even cheaper on 1080p entry level. LG is still hammering at the 144Hz segment. And Asus GPUs are technically not on special, but at the price they deserve some attention. That is unfortunately all we have time for this week, but uh, later in the week I will be doing a 10400F1660 Super pairing, which I would assume would be a really good mid-range gaming buy. So I'm going to be comparing that to what we launched with on the channel about now 18 months ago. So we're going to see how far mid-range gaming has come and if you can do 1080p60 on any title on a budget. So until then, I hope you keep well and I will be seeing you on the flip side.